This is a Scott Stereo Master receiver, 342 tuner amplifier receiver. When I first started Hill's Workbench, I did a port on this earlier, a repair on it actually, and it was called the Solderless Repair, because all I really ended up having to do was clean these switches, and the pots, and these switches. The switches were all miserable. I'm going to try again. It, that was like five years ago. It lasted for five years, but just this last year it started acting funky and finally got to a point where it doesn't really work. At least one channel I couldn't get to work. My brother claimed he got the other channel to work, but I was wiggling the switches sideways and everything else. Chris God knows if you have the right switch. It'd be nice to replace all these switches. I'm not going to do that at this present time. I'm contemplating maybe bypassing this switch because it's kind of obsolete. It's back for the uh, age when mono and stereo were kind of coexisting together. And you might have a two-track reel-to-reel uh, -reel or a four-track reel-to-reel with some two-track tapes or situations like that. Four-track cartridges and eight-track cartridges. At any rate, you can make it so it only plays one side. Or the other. So that was kind of for the mono-stereo transition times. In other words, I could pretty much bypass that switch if I really needed to. They actually feel pretty good. They're, the cleaner I used had a little lube in them. I'm going to try to keep it solderless, though, and just as an experiment, and see if the famous name brand expensive deoxit stuff is really that superior. So I'm going to treat this amp with deoxit over all the controls, see if that brings her back to life, and if it does, I'm it's going to be kind of a long-term thing to see if it lasts any longer than the other stuff did. Which was maybe about four years before it started getting trouble. I really love the way this thing was made. It's like one step away from tube construction. The way they laid things out. See the transistors and sockets lined up in a row with IF coils, the IF transformers. Just, just like you do in a tube circuit, you know, except for his transistors there. I believe these are all silicon transistors, so at least it's that advanced. But you see the resistors are all carbon comps. Capacitors are all uh, Nashville, I think it was. Just beautiful construction, though. Done with loving care. All these twisted wires routed back to the switch. And there's the slide switches I'd have to replace to really fix it correctly. It'd be quite an effort though to take it all apart that far to get to those things. I'd probably have to take the front panel off. Just the detail, the little pulleys. And Beautiful. I'm pretty sure it's uh, quasi camp. So I took one cover off. Yeah, it's a quasi setup. I, I believe they're house numbered. They're probably like uh, 3055 type transistors though. There's a voltage between the two, like it always is in a quasi, because one's tied to rail and one's tied close to the speaker. So that's why they have a short guard there. Not much of a heat sink, just the chassis itself pretty much. So I had this thing upside down and I sprayed the switches out. Now I have it right side up and I see in the cover all kinds of uh, liquid from, so I sprayed it last night, or yesterday evening actually. I'm surprised this stuff hasn't evaporated or otherwise dried up. I didn't think there was silicone in this stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't say anything about silicone. I'm kind of surprised there's this much debris left. This much liquid left. And this is a lick from the top. The top panel off. All these transistors and sockets again, even in the RF stages. Nashville capacitor still surviving after all these decades. It'd be interesting to pull some of these capacitors and actually test them. I'm not going to do that since it's all working. Keep this baby's original if she's all working. Why well, screw with it?
Well, as expected, spraying the controls made everything work again. That was the case when I worked on it a few years ago. Five years ago, I believe. Thereabouts. I also took out the bulb and put a diode in instead for the uh, stereo indicator. Just a single diode. It actually uh, controls a six volt AC line, but it only, of course, sinks one side of the line for the uh, conventional bulb that was in there. The conventional bulb was so dim that it was almost ineffectual, so it's going to be very bright now. So now, next I'm going to get the uh, two holders I and mean, put LEDs in them. I put two LEDs in series, and then I threw a resistor in series just for yucks. They should work actually even without the resistor. Six volt uh, AC, but just for safety. There should be enough uh, peak inverse on them too, especially in series. This should work, so I'm going to install these two. It'd be nice to put a capacitor across them so they wouldn't, you know, have a high speed flicker, but I don't think anybody's going to worry about that. Of course, that's going to have it too. And I had also considered using uh, four LEDs together. <laughs> It'd just be so bright and bulky. I got to kind of fit them in the general area they were. So I'm going to use two LEDs each. So it's working. And I've changed out the lights. And I got to turn it off before you get some copyrights. Anyways, nice and bright. The panel is very bright now. I'll show you when I get it all back together. And it's going to be bright. <laughs> they won't forget that it's on. They were happy I replaced the lights last time I worked on it. So I know they appreciate the lights. So they don't realize, you know, that it's on. And now they shouldn't burn out no matter how long they keep them on. Also, I feel I haven't hurt the collector value of it because I didn't do these in a way that you couldn't just clip them out and uh, put regular bulbs back in and bring it right back to stock. Not that there's a big collector value. There should be. It's a priceless little antique here, but just for anybody who thinks I did sacrilege, it's not permanent. It could be easily taken out. Last screws in, the feet are on, one foot's broken. I'm gonna, I need to put that in a little stronger. I need to uh, find some feet for this thing. Another foot's got a lot of cracks in it, so it's about ready to do the same as this one did. But that's it, she's back together. And classical station sounds pretty good, but it fades in and out. It's not strong enough to trigger the stereo light. So now I just gotta glue the little cap back in. Hope these are coming off. Little cap came off this knob. And uh, wipe her down and she's done. Old faithful, ready for another 40, 50 years. <laughs>